so we're doing some it'll be fine science today uh, to see if you can in fact super glue brake shoes back on to the rest of the shoe. Pretty sweet right there as a factory hole. Oh, okay. It's finally, someone yeah. is gonna fit the stuff we built. Yeah, look, there we go. <laughs> On today's episode of Cars and Cameras, Charles and I are surprising Ike by restoring his Z50 for him that he bought in a package deal a few months ago. The good news is it's partially restored. The paint is in great shape. The bad news is this thing didn't even come with a bucket of bolts with it. What we have here is what we got. So it's gonna be quite challenging sourcing parts and figuring out how to put it back together. But we thought this would be a really nice thing for us to do since Ike is laid up for a few weeks after rolling the Hondukey and having surgery on his shoulder. So let's uh, make a parts list and get started. So there's more missing than we thought. We have a pretty extensive list I already placed in order, but we should have enough to get us by to get a runner in this episode. So we have these old wheels and tires. They're really crusty, but the hubs are aluminum and we can clean them up and they're going to work just fine for our reproduction wheels. So we're going to start there and kind of move down our extensive list. So let's get started, man. Also, air conditioning. Thumbs up for air conditioning. It only took us seven years. Oh my goodness. I'll punch myself in the jaw. Oh, that's a lot of strength on that tiny little ball. <laughs> the gun started smoking. Hey, she came out and the threads look like it might be. Let's see. Oh. There we go. A little dirty, but yeah, she'll clean up good. So we got one of our wheels together. Charles is working on the other. Yeah. One thing to note about these Z50 wheels is the R's and then the regular Z50s have different styles of hubs. Some wheels have three bolts, some have four. So just whatever you're working on, not all wheels are made the same. Make sure you order the one that corresponds with your hubs. For example, this one has four. It's completely different. And then that one, that's a three. All right, so this front wheel is pretty much ready to get installed. The old Z50 is already coming together. Ike, when you're watching this man, I hope we're making you proud. We didn't have a bolt that perfectly fit, so we had to space it out with a couple of washers. We have proper bolts on the way, but for now this is gonna work for us. Uh, we didn't have the proper spacer, couldn't find one online, so we made one out of tubing. The front brake is all hooked up and ready to go. It's even adjusted properly. Uh, we ran into the problem of not having linkage for this rear brake, but we're gonna make it work. I found this rod here and we're just gonna put a little 90 degree bend in the end, drill a hole in it so we can put it through there with a cotter pin, just like factory. We're gonna put this through that little barrel nut that goes there and then we're either gonna make one or find one and uh, we're gonna have rear brakes. Turns out we didn't have brake pads. The original rear brake pads were adhered to the hub and not the brake shoes. So we're doing some it'll be fine science today uh, to see if you can in fact super glue brake shoes back on to the rest of the shoe. We're gonna see what happens. And finally, we don't have a rear bolt, but 
we have uh, an old rod from the original Bronco and it fits perfectly in those bearings. So we're gonna use this as the center of the rod and uh, we'll basically make a bolt. It'll be fine, right? Exactly. All right, guys, I don't know if we've ever shown this, but this is a chain adjuster for the rear, for the rear axle. Uh, we need to make one, and if you're ever in the same pinch, find a similar thread, similar length bolt, washer with the same inner diameter, cut the head off and weld them two together. You can actually make yourself a chain adjuster or a set. You can do the same thing with both of them. We don't really have the right rear sprocket. That one won't work. This one's not the right bolt pattern, but the inner diameter is. So I had to use this to set down on the bearing, keep it centered. That fit, that fit in there, put paint marker on the end. So now I know where to drill. It'll be fine, right? So we looked at another Z50 we had under the house and this rear brake bracket does have a bend in it to clear. Uh, another thing we found out is that we actually have new brake shoes, but you know, for science purposes, we're gonna see if the glue works, and uh, if it doesn't work, we're gonna swap it out. Um, another thing, we're building the Rock Crawler Z50. Show them why, Charles. Uh, well, hold on. 46 teeth. This is a rear sprocket off of a, uh, I think a Coleman, like a Coleman CT e e e EX200, I'm not really sure the number, but yeah, it's Coleman mini bike, yeah, definitely not for a Z50, so I had to, drill out the three bolt pattern, had to use a socket to space it just right. The good news is we found the correct bolt for the front end and this one should work pretty nicely for the rear. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount up our brake brackets. We're gonna keep this party going. Hammer time. Time to put a tiny hole right in there uh, for a cotter pin. Oh boy. So our rear brake rod is coming together. I put the bend in there, I drilled a hole there so we can put a washer and a cotter pin to hold it in place. Basically, we need to tack or weld a washer in there somewhere to act as a stop for our spring that'll push our um, brake lever back. And then we're gonna trim this rod. We're gonna get tap and die set and use a die on this and thread it to the same thread so we actually have rear brake adjuster. So yeah, it's like like it never even like yeah it it'll never be exactly like factory dude yeah so cool and I'm pretty sure Ike already found that this has spark so we need to get some fuel to it make sure our wiring is hooked up and we can test it man yeah getting close good. it's crazy how the foot pegs bolt to the bottom of the case it is I, I know these are really stout engines but man that that worries me if you dump it and stick the foot peg down in the ground. Oof. Gonna cut it. Oh boy. We're good. We're good. Glad I left that orange one tight. Uh, or well. Ish. So we're gonna set the bike on the ground and uh, we're having a hard time finding neutral. So we're gonna figure that out and uh, see if we can get it to spark and hit even though we don't have an intake, a carburetor, or a proper exhaust. We're gonna see if we can get it to fire off. So we found neutral, and it's unlike any other pit bike we've ever worked on. It's like somewhere in between one and two. It's like a, yeah, it's like a street bike. It's like one is all the way down, and then neutral is in between one and two, and you can't find it every single time either. So I'm going to put this thing in run position, and assuming the wiring is good, which who knows, it should light off with some brake clean, so go for it, man. No, we got some upper cylinder lubricant. Uh, is the spark plug in there? Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice, though. You know what? Is that Does the coil need to be grounded? Does that need to be I grounded? Think, That's a coil that needs to be grounded. To the That's a great idea. Oh, yeah, got some spark. Yeah, I heard oh, it. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna hit the gas this time. Give us a throttle. Oh boy! <laughs> hey! She makes her own noises. It makes runny noises. I like how you said you were gonna wide open throttle. <laughs> yeah, it's not it. <laughs> wide open throttle. 
Cool, dude. Nice job. Yeah, man. Well, I'm glad we put all this effort into a runner. A runner, yeah. yeah. And we know it has oil in it, so we're going to stuff this in the corner, put a cover over it so Ike doesn't notice. Don't tell Ike. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you when we get parts in. Welcome back to the Surprise Z50R build. We have parts in. Should be enough to finish the bike. Ike is getting in tomorrow afternoon, so we should have enough time to get this thing ready uh, and let him check it out. Got a brand new reproduction exhaust for this thing. Looks pretty good. It's only a 110, so that should be plenty of flow. We ordered a repop fuel tank, but we remembered we had this one. Sorry. <laughs> You're good, man. Mike's getting camera shot. actually got fuel you got to turn it around Charles it's ah! all right let's get her lined up looking better already yeah all right so it looks like this tab got bent in shipping or doing something but it's gonna bolt right there and the exhaust is gonna be on so I cleaned up the wiring, I mounted the coil, mounted the CDI box. Charles built an intake manifold for us, the carburetor's mounted. Literally all we need to do is install the seat and flip the petcock on the fuel so we get some gasoline going in this thing. It'll be time for test drive. So let's get it done. The seat has been installed. Let's uh, give this a flip, see if we can get some fuel flowing. And uh, give it a shot. Oh, check out where I routed the uh, key. It's pretty sweet right there. There's a factory hole. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I need a hose clamp on there. Charles is back. I got good news. Can I say it? Or yeah. We need to keep it personal. Oh. You can say it if you well, want to say it. No, I'm, I'm going to be a dad, proud father of a little baby boy. Woo! Charles is having yep. a boy. We get to build a mini bike together. Yes, finally, someone yeah. is gonna fit the stuff we built. Yeah, look, <laughs> there we go. So we had this kickstand and we had to shorten it. We had a nice plug in there and some rosettes to weld it up. And uh, I've been working on a little project in my spare time. I'm really proud of it. It's this uh, fold out welding table for a Harbor Freight, like Vulcan style welding cart. It's really nifty, it just folds out like this. And it's a great working space because we still don't have a welding table and we don't have room for one. We need something that can stow away. Uh, so I just kind of whip this up in my spare time. So you just can uh, ground to the table or ground to whatever you're welding to and uh, tack it up. It's been really nifty so far. I'm uh, planning on putting these on the website, cars-cameras.com, if you want to buy one. Uh, the cool thing is, is it bolts right onto your existing Vulcan um, welding cart. You don't have to modify it at all. And so I'll include everything you need to weld it together yourself along with a set of instructions. Uh, but anyway, let's uh, get this welded up. That's done. Let me tell you, after welding on the floor for like six years, this is a game changer. So the Cars and Cameras collapsible welding table add-on for the Vulcan Harbor Freight welding cart, it's a heck of a name, uh, is gonna be available soon. This is just a prototype. I'm gonna rebuild it with some holes in the top uh, out of maybe quarter inch. Yep. Maybe something a little bit thinner just to keep it lightweight, but uh, be on the lookout for it very soon. I'll post more uh, updates on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. But anyway, let me know what you think so far. You got any ideas? Let me know in the comments. This thing turned out awesome. Yeah, I think it did. Oh wow, that's a Ike lot is gonna of... love it. <laughs> oh boy, I knew that was gonna be a, a problem. Shoelace? See, look, look how much <laughs> your foot's almost off of it yeah. already. Hold on, I'm making excuses. She's making running noises. Yeah. But that's. Aha! Yeah! There it is, man. Wild hog! 
Sounds good. Uh-oh. Uh, where's our idle control on this thing? I bet you it needs to be Hold on, I got, up. Hold on, I got, a, I got a Diablo tuner in my pocket. Hold on. Sweet. Take leak. Let me try that again. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I think I think we may have a. But why is it dying? If it's. Uh... Yeah, it shouldn't be dying unless it's flat out choking it out. Right. Like, like just not enough air. It's not that much, but. Uh... With starting fluid, it ought to pick up. You that's, think that's, so? That's right? what I, you know. <sighs> well, you want to take it out for a ride anyway? Yeah, we can try that. See what happens. It'll fix itself, dude. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, all, it's only bad if you look at it. Yeah. Hey, all I think I'm stuck in first gear. Oh, stuck in first gear? That'd be a kick. Does it go up? Okay, it doesn't go either way. Oh, sweet. Can't find neutral, uh oh. Well, I'll just hold it down, it's okay. Okay. So, how's it running, man? Runs good, hold on. Dude, it's doing like a weird surgy thing. Yeah. Well, I'll we can see. ask the guru when he gets here. Ugh. I'm kind of holding it in and out of gear right now, but let's see. Damn, that kickstand is flopping. <laughs> Kill it, man. Our, our kill switch doesn't work. What? Oh yeah, okay, that's kind of not good. Oh, okay, that's the kill switch. All right. Yeah. Well, okay. So, the that's the new exhaust. So, um, the the big sprocket that we put on the back. Yeah. It definitely takes off pretty quick. I, yeah. I like it. Oh yeah. I kind of like it. I mean, I and I I only got into third gear. I don't know if there's a fourth. Think it's a three speed. I, yeah. So I didn't want to really try. I like it. I, I I'm as soon as Ike has both both uh, access to both of his arms. I, th I think he's really gonna like this. And, I think so too. You know, he'll, he'll enjoy watching us ride it around. Let's surprise the crap out of him. How about that? Absolutely. In three, two, one. Dang it, Bobby, we were going to surprise it Ike, and up, it was he up came here faster time. than we thought, and... I can't, I was on time. Yeah, all right, well, come look at your bike, man. You we said between I three know, and four. Close your eyes, close your eyes. Close your eyes. All right, come on. Come on, son. It's Christmas morning. It's Christmas morning. It's not the chrome tank one, but, uh... Gosh, 
Yeah. Should have bought that one. Yeah. I worked lots of overtime hours. That, that looks familiar. Yeah. Lots of overtime hours. Get this. Whoa. <laughs> Dude, there you go, son. Dude, it cleaned up good, didn't it? Yeah, how does yeah. it run? Uh, it runs. Uh, weird carburetor problems or something else. It's not an automatic, is it? It's a semi-automatic and neutral is very difficult to find. Okay. So I was hoping you could help us troubleshoot a little bit. Gotcha. But it, it rides good. It's like the perfect amount of power for some of that you size. You see something special? Yeah. We put you, we put you trail riding, trail riding gear on there. Dude, we couldn't find a regular gear, so you put like a mini bike rear sprocket on it. That's a Coleman or a MB200 rear Would sprocket. Would you like to redrill holes? Yes, I redrilled yeah. holes. Thanks, guys. Well, we wanted something to surprise you with. Yeah. Cool. What other surprises you got? That's pretty well, much we, it. We made, a, we made the kickstand, or modified it, and, uh -huh. and I made you an intake. Awesome. So there you have it, folks, a budget restoration on an old Honda Z50R that we surprised Ike with. This just goes to show that there are all kinds of little bits and pieces in these old mini bikes that sometimes you can't buy online and you have to build. For example, like the spacers that go in between the front axle, uh, spacers for the rear axle, the rear brake linkage, but with a little bit of ingenuity and uh, some it'll be fine logic, you can get there. So thanks for watching, everybody. Give Charles a congratulations for me down in the comments. He's going to be a dad. Super exciting. We're going to need some cars and cameras, onesies or something. It's going, to, it's going to be fun. We're headed up to Colorado with Go Power Sports for some mini bike riding. So if you have any ideas on mini bike content you want to see from the Rocky Mountains, let us know in the comments as well. Thanks again, everybody, and we'll catch you next time. You, you know what I think of every time you say banana sauce? What's that? You know how those in those new Dodge cars have those little yellow things? And you know how some people have taped bananas up there? Yeah. Every time they hit a curb, banana sauce, <laughs> yeah, they leave those on. Just take, yeah, just take them off. That's good. When you're driving on the highway, it's okay. <laughs>